Okay. Hello, peeps. So, I'm not gonna lie to you. We've been avoiding this video for a very, very long time. Because today, we're gonna be trying to explain how Reflectix works. So, when talking about Reflectix, it is actually extremely easy to get tangled up because people use them for two different functions that are actually rather unrelated but not mutually exclusive. So the two things that we use Reflectix for are a moisture barrier and a radiant barrier. Now some people use this Reflectix as one or the other or both or not at all. Yeah. Which can be quite confusing. So the best way to explain what our research has shown uh, is to explain moisture barriers and radiant bar barriers separately. A vapour barrier or a moisture barrier is meant to stop the moist air from within your living quarters going through your wall and hitting the cold van metal on the outside where the temperature difference will make that moisture condense on the metal. And since we stuff these cavities full with insulation there's very limited airflow so the moisture will have quite a hard time moving around in there and eventually over time this will cause mold and also in a van it will also cause rust. <laughs> All right, so, and as for a radiant barrier, radiant barriers help to insulate the van by keeping the heat in in colder weathers and out in warmer climates. You know how hot your van gets whenever the sun hits it directly? Even if it's cold outside, if the sun hits the metalwork directly, the metalwork absorbs that heat. And when you're in the van, it feels almost like an oven hot climate. Mm. You're, you're quite cooking in, yeah. in there. And that heat that you're feeling, that is radiant heat. And unless boiling is your thing, uh, we can reduce this effect by putting a reflective surface within our insulation system to reflect that uh, radiant heat, uh, either in or out depending what's needed. So ideally we would use the Reflectix for both purposes and ordinarily this would not be a problem in a standard breathable house. However in the van conversion we are working with a metal shell that is not breathable at all. Unless you poke holes into the outside of the van. Although I don't think that's very good for waterproofing this. Yeah, don't do that. It, it, does, it does funny thing for, for waterproof, waterproofness. Now the problem with a moisture barrier and why some people bother to install one and some don't is that for a moisture barrier to be effective it has to be 100% completely sealed and secured with no gaps. Now realistically in a van conversion that ship has sailed the moment that that thought enters your mind. As you drive along in the van it vibrates, the metal expands and contracts with temperature. Over time eventually all this foil tape and bubble wrap some of it might start to unpeel, you might get a little puncture and over time this lets moisture through into your wall cavity. So as an example, this is one of the first things that we actually did in the van. We put the foil tape and the Reflectix over the wheel wells since we knew we were putting the floor in and wouldn't be able to access the area. And over time, the foil tape, although when we put it on was seamless to begin with, there are a few tiny, tiny gaps in it now. And I know this is a work van, so we've obviously caught the edge of it, but there are a few holes in here and such. But over time, this is what will happen to all your Reflectix that you install throughout the van. So the very fact that this is a moving vehicle makes the idea of a perfectly seamless moisture barrier pretty unlikely. As a general rule, that is why some people elect not to put any Reflectix uh, in their insulation system because of how unlikely it is to make it so seamless. And they would rather share the airflow of their living space with their wall cavities to try and vent that moisture out of the walls again because that is the only way for the for, for the moisture to go really because once it's in the walls <laughs> if it's sandwiched between Reflectix and the steel van metal it has nowhere to go there's there's no airflow you do have in mind that uh, there's already moisture in the walls technically yeah. because depending on how humid you, your, your day is when you put the Reflectix on and seal it you will trap some moisture in there so just have in mind that that's also a thing. It's not a, it's not a pure vacuum. So your two options are put Reflectix on and make it completely seamless or don't put it at all and share the airflow of your living space to yep. vent. However, Reflectix is not just a moisture barrier. Its main function is actually to be a radiant barrier. And if you elect not to put any Reflectix on, 
then you lose that function as well. So to understand how to install a radiant barrier correctly, we first need to understand a little bit more about how radiancy works. So radiancy is a type of heat that only travels through air or a vacuum. And let's face it, a vacuum is impossible to get in a van. So for example, if you go and stand near a radiator in your house and put your hands near it, but not touching it, the heat that you're feeling is radiant heat hence why they're called radiators. However, if you then touch the radiator with your hands, it's not any more radiant heat that you're feeling, but it's conductive heat from one solid, the radiator, to your hands. Ouch. However, the problem with radiant barriers is that you need an air gap for the radiant barrier to work. And in a van conversion, what that means is that you need to sacrifice a couple of centimeters on your van walls to accommodate this air gap and that means your actual living space will be slightly narrower. Only about three or four centimeters but if you're installing a bed widthways that can make all the difference. And this air gap is absolutely vital for Reflectix to work. There's no point installing it if you don't have an air gap. So it doesn't actually matter which way you create the sandwich with the air gap. So as an example, the van metal is now hot. The sun is sitting it directly, so it is roasting. And because it's radiating, I can feel the heat. So to stop it, we need to install the reflective surface somewhere in our insulation system. So the first way we can do that is we can use our framing. So we mount the framing to our van, then we either attach the reflectix uh, stretched across our framing, or we stick it onto our wall cladding. So for ease sake, we're sticking it onto the wall cladding. And then you mount your wall cladding with the Reflectix onto your framing. Now this creates our air gap. And in the places where there is Reflectix, I can no longer feel that boiling hot radiant heat coming through because the Reflectix is reflecting it back out. And then the other way that you can approach this is you can stick the Reflectix onto the van metal directly. Then you do your framing and that holds the Reflectix in place. Okay, and then you mount your cladding on top of that and then you get the same air gap shebang here. If you stick the Reflectix onto the van metal, now you're working with the concept of emissivity, which is essentially the opposite of reflectivity, but it does the same thing. It only lets in about 3% of the radiancy coming from the outside. So no matter which way you put the Reflectix, you will get the same result as long as you have an air gap. And the same stands true in winter when the inside of the van is warmer than the outside. The Reflectix will reflect the heat back into your cabin space. However, if you decide that you don't need a radiant barrier and just install the Reflectix for its moisture barrier purposes and decide to sandwich all three layers together without any air gap whatsoever, you're actually making the system work against you. You will be increasing the rate of heat transference by sandwiching the Reflectix because the heat is now conducting through the whole system since there is no air gap. So what all of this means is that if you can't ensure a clear gap throughout your insulation system to accommodate for the radiancy, then it's probably best to skip on the Reflectix. Right, so we have decided to go go ahead and put Reflectix on the van. Despite all the various pitfalls that that may provide, we do think that a radiant barrier is an important aspect of the insulation system. So we're going to work very hard to try and create a clear gap through all of this poofiness and you know, PIR board uh, stuff. So to finish off, we're gonna be showing you how we're going to install this Reflectix sheet. And um, I don't know, Bob's your uncle? Bob's your uncle, Sue's your aunt, Jim's your crocodile, and... And Jeff's your insulation. Right, to begin with, we reduce the puffiness of some of these um, pieces of uh, fluffy insulation because the cavities are not uh, 100 mil thick. They are of... of they change, but on average about six to seven to seven centimeters, so sixty to seventy millimeters uh, deep. Um, so we're gonna just rip a thin strip out, and the reason we decided to do this is because we do not want the reflectix to be bulging out. Because as we said, you need to have a clear air gap, and since our air gap is going to be created by uh, eighteen mil ply. It's not that big of an air gap. So for the radiant barrier to work well, it is best that the Reflectix is rather taut and flat. It gives you good clearance and it means that there's no like buckling, you know, you know, just sagging or whatever. And we mustn't forget that the Reflectix is not just acting as a radiant barrier, but as a moisture barrier. So the way we install it has to be suitable for both. So we're going with the option that we're installing Reflectix 
onto the van itself, then we'll put the framing on top and then the cladding on top of the framing. So our air gap will be not between the van and the reflectix, but between the reflectix and the wall we install. And the main reason we decided to go with that over the other one is that we think that you can get a better uh, moisture barrier seal when you stick to the van metal. Yeah, especially if you do the reflectix in sections like this, rather than doing a full floor to ceiling piece, because you can ensure that each edge here on this section is tightly sealed to the van. And you can actually get this torta against the van as well. So we're going to use foil tape around the edges and then on the underneath where there's metal like this we're going to use spray adhesive as well to try and make it as taut as possible in the middle. There's no point putting spray adhesive on this stuff it would just be a waste. It won't make it any tauter. Hopefully this will go well. So see, nice and tall. All right, so that is now nice and taut and it is completely sealed around the edges. Of course, without completing the rest of the cavities, this is useless, but <laughs> there you go. This is the method that we're gonna use to stick them. The spray adhesive really does help with this um, tall Tautness. tautness, yeah. And as, as soon as you, you spray it and you put it on, it, it sticks. It doesn't go anywhere. So there's yeah. no crinkly, buckling. I mean, we, we've been bouncing on this a bunch of times now. <laughs> And it hasn't changed. It's like the um, sound deadening video. In short, with Reflectix, to have it or not to have it, either install it properly for both purposes or don't install it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to do that, sweetie? Hi! There's a few kinks to work out, like a few breathability issues, but we're going to address those in the framing and cladding videos that we do. So yeah, subscribe for the rest of uh, this and hope this video made sense and it cleared a little bit about um, uh, Reflectix and such and things like that. And if you have any more questions about Reflectix, just leave them down in the comments below. <coughs> subscribe for more cats. Oh, that, that's why she cried. Oh, mm -hmm. hi, sweetie. Uh, there you go. Oh, did he pick you up? <laughs>